Hello and welcome, my name is Stefano, and in today's video we have a lot to cover about at and 5 gigabit per second internet, so use the chapters below to skip around to find the information you're looking for specifically, or if you're looking for all the details, be sure to watch the video in its entirety because there is a lot of information. Everything from signing up to the BGW320 gateway that they give you, as well as bandwidth tests and other minor details like about Wi-Fi and other hardware related issues that you may run into at home. First things first though, who needs five gigabit per second internet at home? Well, at t markets for people that work from home and gamers, as well as large households. But in reality, gamers don't really need this kind of speeds or this kind of bandwidth because what gamers are really looking for is lower latency. So if you have a fiber connection at home, you're gonna have low latency already and you don't need five gigabit internet uh, per second internet to just you know play games or even download games. One gigabit is way more than enough and honestly, you probably will be pretty happy with anything under 300 or up to 300 for gaming uh, altogether because you really need that lower latency so you can frag your friends uh, much more easily without all the lag that's involved between you and servers. Now, to give you an idea of how much bandwidth 5,000 megabits or five gigabits is, um, a typical 4K stream is around 25 megabits per second, depending on where you're watching. But let's pretend for ease it is 25 megabits per second. Well, if you divide 25 megabits by 5,000, that leaves you with 200 simultaneous streams going at the same time at 4K. That is how much bandwidth you are paying for and a lot of people do not need to be able to stream 200 4K movies all at the same time because you know, you're know you a single household and maybe if you are a multifamily household, generally you don't have 13 to 20 people in your household using the internet all at the same time. And if you do, kudos there, it's a lot of work. I'm glad to see that at and is pushing the forefront of high-speed internet at home forward because that is really good for pretty much everyone because that generally drives costs down. So how do you even sign up for at and 5 gig service? Well, you have to check to see if it's available in your area first and at and has a tool for this and you just basically put in your uh, home address and it'll tell you, hey, we have it or we don't. Or they'll tell you what services they do offer anyway in your area. If you're an existing customer, you can go log in or log into your account or check your app and manage your network and then see what options are available to you there. And you are pretty much good to go. Now, as an existing fiber customer, the installation process was quite easy because all they had to do was bring me a module or as they call a GPON and put it inside of my BGW320 gateway. If you do not have the BGW320 gateway like I do, when you have the older model or any other model, then at t will have to bring you out a new gateway so you can take advantage of their five gig service. But there are some issues with the gateway. Well, maybe not really with it, but there are some caveats to go along with it that you should be aware of before you just run off to the races. So if you look at the back of the device, it has four ethernet ports, three of which are one gigabit per second. They're the ones in yellow and the one that's clearly labeled five gigabit is the only port that you can use uh, for a five gigabit connection. Now it's not too big of a deal because typically if you need more connections than just that one that they provide, you can use a switch that will allow you to have more connections that is five gig capable. And that's the important part. You have to have the equipment at home in order to supply other computers in your house with a five gig connection. Now, if you think you're gonna get five gigabits out of the BGW320 via Wi-Fi, I'm sorry to tell you this, but that is just not gonna happen. Even though it's Wi-Fi 6 capable, and even though you have Wi-Fi 6 capable devices, and you are standing right in front of the thing, you are not gonna see anything beyond one gigabit per second. I have tested it and it does not work. But hey, one gigabit over Wi-Fi is pretty good. I know some high-end devices that don't even do that, especially at point blank range. But we'll get into the bandwidth test a little bit later. You should also be aware that most hardware that is sold to consumers is not five gig ready. Now there are some high end or enthusiast level uh, parts and components and hardware out there that will help you or already has the five gig uh, network adapter on it that you need to get to those speeds. But for the most part, everything is one gig and sometimes 2.5 if you spend a little bit extra money on your um, gaming desktops workstations or whatever it may be. But typically you will need to purchase extra hardware like a 10 gig NIC 
or a five gig NIP that will help you uh, achieve those five gigabit speeds that AT&T is now selling because it is not really possible unless you have additional hardware at home to help you get there because like I said, everything is typically one gig only. Finally, the part of the video that you guys have probably been waiting for and that is the bandwidth tests, AKA the speed tests. And the first ones we're gonna take a look at are the Wi-Fi tests that I did at various um, ranges, basically zero feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, 50 feet. And uh, let's go and take a look at those. So at the zero foot, approximately zero feet, it's more like eight foot, um, our upload, I'm sorry, our download speed was 940 megabits per second and our download speed was 840 megabits per second, which is pretty good in my opinion, uh, on Wi-Fi 6 of course. And then at 10 feet, uh, we had 900 megabits per second down and 800 megabits per second up. And uh, just so you guys know, I was able to hit one gigabit down and about 890 up uh, on some tests. And then at around 20 feet, um, I was at like eh, about 790 uh, megabits down and 510 megabits up. Not the greatest at that distance, but um, not terrible either. And then at 50 feet, uh, I had 620 megabits per second down and 310 megabits per second up. And there was only a couple of walls uh, in between me and the uh, gateway at this point, as you can see here. And as you can see, the house is basically an open floor plan. So there wasn't a lot of things to get in the way uh, to block those Wi-Fi uh, signals or frequencies, whatever, whatever have you. For the nerds out there, I tried to use iPerf and between the Wi-Fi on my MacBook Pro to my gaming computer. And here are the results I got. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at, um, but it seems to say that it's like 90 megabits per second uh, in bandwidth, which sounds terrible, especially when I'm standing right in front of the gateway. And then I also tried at uh, 20 simultaneous connections and 40 simultaneous connections. And so you'll see the results for that here on screen. Uh, again, I'm just gonna leave this to you uh, gurus out there that can interpret this data a lot better than I can. Um, and you guys wanted to see iPerf uh, tests in the past, in the past, so here they are. Uh, enjoy. Finally, here are the speed tests or bandwidth tests over a wired connection from my gaming computer that has a 10 gig card in it to the greater internet. So we downloaded games uh, from Steam and Battle.net and ran some speed tests. And we're gonna look at the uh, one gigabit per second uh, link, what, that's what I had before, and then the five gigabit per second uh, link that I have now with AT&T. So let's take a look. Trust me, it's pretty interesting. Battle.net is first in on the left side of your screen, you can see the one gigabit download. I think we have peaks of about 900 megabit per second, uh, as close as one gigabit per second, but never quite hitting that one gigabit mark. And then for the uh, five gig test, the highest I saw was about 2.4 gigabits per second. And remember that's on your right side uh, there, as you can see. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with those results, but not quite that five gigabit speed, which is not really a surprise. Following the trend of downloading games, here we are downloading Halo on Steam, and we got peak downloads of about 600 megabits per second and the bottom portion of the screen, we had downloads of approximately 2.1 gigabit per second on the five gig connection. Interestingly, uploading to YouTube on one gig and five gig connections was about the same. So we had peaks of about 54 megabits per second on both, and they would slowly dwindle down to somewhere between 33 and 35 megabits per second, usually hovering at the 34 megabit per second range uh, during those uploads. And I found that really weird. Um, it seems like YouTube has some sort of upload uh, cap, uh, at least as far as I can tell. For Google Drive, I got very similar results as the YouTube upload, where I would see very uh, high spikes at first at upwards of 54 megabits per second, and then they would slowly dwindle down or drop to 32 megabits per second, and kind of ride that 32, 33, 34 megabit per second range, never really getting uh, anywhere too high. 
For speed test services, we took a look at Wi-Fi Man, Spectrum, and Fast.com. I did try a few others, but they didn't work. Uh, like for instance, for Measurement Lab, as you'll see here shortly, as well as speedtest.net, I could not do any upload tests for either of those for some strange reason, even though Spectrum uses speedtest.net, but whatever. Um, the results were clearly a little bit all over the place. Uh, Fast.com seemed to always give the most reliable results. I'm not really sure what's going on with Wi-Fi Man.com or Spectrum. Uh, but I'm going to trust in fast.com and assume that I could achieve 4.6 gigabyte, gigabytes down as well as uh, 2.7 to 3.9 up uh, from what I've seen uh, to, at fast.com. Thanks to one of you guys out there. I did also manage to do a test with a server in the Netherlands that had a 10 gigabit per second internet connection but the results were not that good. On a one gig connection, I saw upwards of 198 megabits per second in terms of bandwidth. Uh, latency was pretty high, of course, because I'm all the way here in the United States. But on the five gig connection, I saw as high as 238 megabits per second, if I'm remembering correctly. And make of that what you will, <laughs> but for a connection all the way to Netherlands, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure if that's good or bad in the grand scheme of things, but I think that's pretty good, assuming that we had both things configured correctly on both ends. The last thing I think I wanna cover for this specific video is kind of an oddball. So for some reason, uh, when trying to do my um, wired connection-based tests, I tried using a couple of 10 gig NICs from Intel, an X540T2 and an X520T2, and both of those were unable to establish a five gigabit per second uh, connection. I turned the auto negotiation um, from auto to uh, five gigabytes hard, but it would still fall back to a one gig connection no matter what I did. Obviously I installed drivers as well. That didn't work for some reason. Uh, so I dug through my list of, or my uh, box of junk and I found my Aquantia or Action, however you want to say it, 10 gig card, and that worked right out of the box, no drivers required, and I was able to get five gigabit per second on my gaming computer to do all of the tests that you saw um, previously, and I actually put a fan on this too, just in case, so that way we weren't over uh, burdening it with all the speed tests that we were just doing back to back to back. Uh, it did fine though, in my opinion, and uh, so that was really odd. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I guess maybe more to come in the future about that as I do a deeper investigation, maybe. I uh, will see what goes on there. And um, I don't think I have any other oddities to report. Everything worked pretty well. The whole process went pretty well and the whole process went uh, fairly easily in my opinion. Um, and if anybody out there has any specific questions about my setup or whatever it may be, uh, drop a comment below and I will do my best to answer them as they pop up. And with all that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.